Hi everyone. Uh, I haven't uploaded for two, maybe three months. Uh, so I'm really sorry for such a huge gap. Uh, but uh, just to make things clear, I haven't abandoned my YouTube channel. I will, I will upload uh, a bit more consistently from now on. Anyway, in this episode, I will be making a, hmm, I wonder how to call it, a stainless pillow. Basically, it's a piece of polished stainless steel uh, inflated like a balloon to be hung on the wall as a piece of art. And uh, <laughs> frankly, when the client or, or the designer reached out to me asking if I would be able to make such thing, uh, I instantly knew there's at least three issues. I haven't uh, worked with stainless steel, nor do I have any equipment needed to work with this type of steel. And uh, in order to make this decently, like it's supposed to be made, uh, it, it uh, required to be uh, hydroformed, basically inflated like a balloon using high pressure uh, uh, water, high, high pressurized, pressurized water. <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, uh, I agreed on this project. Uh, I, I took the risk and uh, I really wanted to try uh, TIG welding and also that uh, uh, hydroforming really uh, intrigued me. So yeah, I give it a try. So I believe there's not that much to explain more and let's jump into the build and I will try to explain everything as the video progresses. First of all, I had to cut the sheet metal. So uh, for this project, I decided to go uh, with uh, 1.5 millimeter uh, uh, stainless steel sheet. Um, I decided to go with this thickness uh, mainly because uh, I'm new. I'm completely new. I have never welded uh, with a thick welder. So I thought uh, uh, some extra thickness will help me uh, to, to get me going and, and not to burn through uh, the sheet. So yeah. And yeah, I, I could have gone with two or three millimeters, but uh, then uh, I wasn't sure if uh, I, I would be able to inflate it uh, afterwards. So anyway, plus, yeah, <laughs> plus the price uh, uh, rises uh, dramatically uh, with every uh, millimeter of thickness. Anyhow, so 1.5 millimeters is the thickness I'm using and uh, uh, we discussed the shape of the let's call it pillow the shape of that pillow uh, with the designer and uh, now i just traced two identical pieces on the this uh, sheet of uh, uh, stainless steel and now i'm just using uh, an angle grinder to cut these shapes out and now i'm at my buddy's place and the very first thing to do was to create a hole and weld a nut or any other uh, stainless steel thread so uh, I would be able to mount the hose uh, and inflate the whole thing. Doing it after these two sheets uh, are together is basically impossible so that's why I'm doing it uh, beforehand. And now you can see how terrible of a welder I am. And I'm using a regular uh, stainless steel nut uh, for this application uh, mainly because I couldn't find any uh, stainless steel uh, plumbing fixture so I decided to go with this regular nut and uh, I threaded the uh, the brass fixtures the brass plumbing fixtures uh, with the same thread because for whatever reason the plumbing fixtures comes uh, in uh, imperial threads and uh, the rest of the stuff is uh, metric like it's supposed to be here so yeah that was something new for me uh, luckily i found a workaround and i was fine uh, now you can see me just tacking the whole thing uh, together and then i will start laying the full beads around the whole thing and even for the beginner as I was, it wasn't too complicated to make a watertight seam. 
So I really enjoyed this process. And the contraption I'm putting together here is basically a safety precaution. I decided to add a valve to release the pressure, uh, more specifically to release the gases, the air out of the vessel before applying any high pressure. And I decided to do that after watching YouTube videos uh, and more specifically uh, Colin's first video uh, when he explained that uh, uh, gas gases uh, are uh, compressible and therefore they can explode and uh, liquids are incompressible and therefore they are safe uh, under pressure. So that made total sense and I decided to uh, add this valve. Uh, and finally it was a fun part or scary part, uh, depends on your uh, point of view. <laughs> anyway, uh, as you can see I started really slowly uh, making sure that there's no air trapped in the vessel and once I was confident that it's uh, full of water only and then I uh, released the full pressure and inflated the whole thing and <laughs> Honestly, I wasn't expecting uh, the outcome like that. It was fairly fast and really uh, smooth and pleasant to watch. And inevitably, something has to give in such a setup. And uh, in my case, that was uh, a side seam. It developed a nasty kink and therefore uh, it lost its uh, strength. But that was about the right look I was I was looking for and I was completely pleased that uh, I got this far and uh, I thought uh, that's that's about right and uh, we stopped uh, we, we released the the pressure we let the water out and uh, I was back to my workshop and the very last step was to bring it up to the mirror polish uh, unfortunately it's easier said than done after starting out I looked it up on the internet to, to check how to do it properly and I realized uh, that stainless steel is one of the toughest materials to polish. Uh, so that was a bit of a bummer uh, and I was left with a couple of days of polishing. Luckily I had a colleague who took it over and uh, uh, finished it up uh, so I'm really thankful for that. And only after the fact I realized that uh, there's uh, sheets, already polished stainless steel sheets which come uh, with the film, protected, and I should have done this project uh, out of that uh, sheet, exposing only uh, the sides where the welds uh, should, uh, should be laid and uh, then I would have polished. I would have polished only those, the perimeter, only the, these sides. So that could have saved me a couple of days of work. Anyway, I will try this approach next time. Now I'm leaving you with the photos of the finished project and I sincerely thank you for being with me and I really hope to see you soon. Bye bye!